We just got brand new revenue numbers from the EADA that label where colleges are and they're standing in in current the, the state that we're in. <laughs> and what is shocking to me is a school like Kansas is top 10. Let's go through these and pick out who is a Big 12 school based on their revenue numbers and how Kansas is in the top 10. Now, Let's be clear. The EADA is Equity in Athletics Disclosure Act. So this is a database that shows you revenue from college athletics. However, how much of it can we trust? Jeff Fuller is the one that posted this, and Jeff is spectacular at what he does, and none of his stuff would be misleading. This from EDA, though, sometimes includes what is given or donated to a school, and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on what's reported. So part of this is a grain of salt. We can still get a good idea of the richer and the poorer of college football, mostly college football. That, in essence, is what what is included here because most teams don't make too much off of basketball. I mentioned Kansas. They are in the top 10 with $206 million dollars in grand total athletic revenue. Now, part of that as well, you can deduce that Kansas building a new stadium and the donations, the money that came into that fund could be included here, putting them in the top 10 leagues ahead of any other big 12 team. The next time we get to a big 12 team is Miami in number 24. Oh, did I say Miami? Oops. Soon to be Miami's at 24. Louisville's at 25. That's kind of where I want to go in the conversation. TCU sits at 29 right now at $149 million. And they're kind of lumped in with the Louisville, with the Miami, who are those mid twenties. Um, kind of crazy. Duke is in there too. The same Duke that I ratted on here recently because of recent football success, they uh, have been making money and guess who Duke's ahead of per the EADA. Once again, the Equity in Athletics Disclosure Act, they're ahead of Clemson. Duke at $153 million in total athletic revenue, Clemson at 152. We take you to the 30s, where UNC is behind Arizona, where Baylor is ahead of Ole Miss and Pitt, Minnesota and Colorado. That's all good and dandy. Here's where things get a little dicey. As we get into the 40s, I hope you'll realize at this point, I haven't said a lot of Big 12 teams. You get to the 40s and the 50s, that's where you find a good portion of our guys, like Arizona State, who is currently sitting at 45. They are just behind Oregon, who's at 42. How wild is that in athletic revenue? Arizona State also ahead of Virginia, who's been a big conversation, topic of conversation in the expansion, and Virginia Tech's ahead of them. That's a lot of who's who, who's who, and who's here, and who's there. Texas Tech's at 50, by the way. Still haven't mentioned like Oklahoma State or Kansas State, BYU, West Virginia. Those schools are 50 or below, which is not good. Iowa State and UCF, Houston, Cincinnati also way down there uh, past the 60s. What is to note here, though, is when you see 153 next to Duke, you go, oh, I wouldn't mind that. 160 ahead of Louisville, 155, 155 ahead of Louisville, 160 ahead of Miami. You go, oh, wait a second. Hold on. If those teams, if those teams were in the Big 12, that'd be a good thing. That would make the conference even stronger from a revenue standpoint. TCU, Baylor, Kansas carrying the load. Two of the smaller schools in here with pretty big endowments in TCU and Baylor, the religious institutions. Two of them. There's BYU as well. Carrying the load here. Huge. Above schools like UCLA, above UNC. Now, UNC at 138, sitting right next to Baylor, sitting behind Arizona, you start to think, oh, wait a second. UNC is not as, as prominent from an athletic revenue standpoint as we thought. And, and maybe the donors are big. Maybe that's not included, but still... You would think the EADA, we're going to spike the numbers to whatever we can get them to. You want that to look good, right? Yeah, these numbers are typically off from USA Today and Sportico because they both go to different places. There are different ways to deduce an athletic revenue based on whether you're counting just the revenue itself from sport or what donors have given. And that's school dependent. But UNC is not flashing anything. Uh, Virginia, Virginia Tech aren't flashing anything. Wait a second. You've heard on this show that Virginia might be a lock for the SEC. They might have the footprint for the SEC. Maybe they do, but they're behind Virginia Tech. Yeah, they give you a new footprint in that conference, but are they really an SEC school? Vanderbilt, sitting at 125. They're in the mid-40s here. Vanderbilt, behind multiple Big 12 schools as well. NC State sits at 51. We already talked about how Texas Tech is at 50. 
Now you start to pick out some of the schools that I've mentioned as Big 12 candidates, as schools that could make it in the Big 12. A Georgia Tech, who people seem to really like, they're at 116. They're behind Oklahoma State. They're at 116 million, but that's only good for 56th in the country. Mississippi State is right ahead of them at 116 as well. Buddy, that's wild. We got SEC teams that are down here hanging out with Northwestern and Syracuse. Utah and BYU making up the last part of the 60s at 68 and 69. West Virginia at 70. Kansas State at 71. Again, all of this per Jeff Fuller. So what I've learned is that the top end where Baylor and TCU, Kansas sit, which is very impressive for those schools and what you've reported to the EDA, there are some others, expansion candidates, that might not be able to flash the card like we thought. Again, Clemson being just one spot above TCU. Miami and Louisville being a couple of spots ahead of Clemson. Duke being ahead of Clemson in athletic revenue per the EADA again. I don't know, buddy. Seems like the Big 12 might not be in a bad spot. Might not be in a tough spot to land some of the big dogs or dogs you would consider big. Told you. I told you 15 years ago, nobody cared about Clemson. And sometimes those brands are very tough to change, even when you do win at the top level, as they've done. If Clemson's bad in football the next five years, their brand does not stay like Nebraska or Texas or even Oklahoma. Coming up, BYU for real. Locked on Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is where I go to buy tickets, last minute tickets. I wanted to go see Billy Strings. My friend William came to End Market here in Savannah, Georgia, where I live and work for the Bananas and Party Animals. And I didn't buy the tickets right off the rip. Why? Because I can go to the Game Time app, browse, and save money. That's right, last minute deal. Save up to 60% buying tickets for last minute sports, concert, comedy, and theater. Flash deals save you Money with exclusive in-app offers. Zone deals save you money when you choose a section. All-in pricing. Toggle that feature that gives you the total up front. No surprise fees later on. Seat view. A panoramic view from your seat. Lowest price guaranteed or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. 